Let me come to this. Uh, let, uh, wait a minute. Now, let me, let me come to the main thing, because standing up to pressure is something the next president is going to have to do. And I'm going to lay it on the line here, Dick. Now, look, you, you voted against the minimum wage every time you had a chance to in the Congress. With, if you had your vote, it would still be $2.30 an hour. Now you say you're for it. You voted against the Department of Education. Now you say you're for it. You voted for tuition tax credits. Now you say you're against it. You voted for Reaganomics. Now you say, well, where are you this week on Reaganomics? I'm not sure. Even on, even, even on, even on the, uh, even, even on, even on the subject that's probably the most difficult issue in this entire campaign, the subject of abortion, where everybody here has given it a lot of thought. It's a difficult issue. I don't know why you did a 180 degree reversal on that issue. But the fact is, you did. And the next president of the United States has to be someone the American people can believe will, will stay with his convictions. And if pressure comes from Gorbachev, from domestic interest groups, from wherever the pressure comes, you've got to be willing to stand your ground and be consistent. Well, I think an oil import fee is a better way to do it because it gets the price of oil stabilized. While I'm on the subject, uh, Al, I enjoyed your lecture on consistency, but you know the oil import fee is a place where I think you've been inconsistent. You've voted against it every time. And now you say when you're, when, when you're in Texas, you say that you would consider it as a way to deal with the budget. So when you make a lecture on consistency, maybe, maybe you better look at your own record first. When you started this race, you decided you needed a southern political strategy. So you decided that you'd better move to the right on defense and a lot of other issues. And lately, you've been sounding more like Al Haig than Al Gore. That line sounds more like Richard Nixon than Richard Gephardt. But Al...